Blood clotting. If we are careless while using a knife, we might cut our finger. A zoomed-in view of the damaged area shows that the knife has ruptured a blood vessel. This causes immense loss of blood. Inside the artery, we observe the RBCs and platelets, which escape out through the damaged area. The platelets play a very important role in the initiation of blood clotting. The blood platelets release a substance called thromboplastin. In the presence of thromboplastin and calcium ions, the prothrombin present in the blood gets converted into thrombin. This thrombin now catalyzes the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. These threads travel towards the damaged area. Here, these thread-like fibrin forms a mesh. The RBCs get caught and remain entangled. These RBCs and fibrin threads together form the blood clot. This clot manages to plug the gap in the ruptured artery and thus prevents further blood loss. The heart is a complex pumping organ. If we look at a section of the heart, we observe that it receives deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body in its right atrium. Now, the tricuspid valve opens and blood keeps flowing into the right ventricle. Then the right atrium contracts, pushing the remaining blood into the right ventricle. This in turn contracts to push the blood into the pulmonary arteries, which carries the blood to the lungs. The pulmonary vein brings back the oxygenated blood into the left atrium of the heart. During arterial contraction, the blood passes through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. During ventricular contraction, the blood pushes its way into the aorta from where it goes to various parts of the body. Heart muscles continuously generate impulses, which cause the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the atria and the ventricles. These impulses are generated by the sinoatrial and auriculoventricle node. Inside the heart, blood flows in a specific direction. The contraction of the atria is called the atrial systole. At this time, the ventricles are in diastole. Then the ventricles contract, and this is called ventricular systole, and the atria are in diastole. This sequence of events, which occur from the beginning of one heartbeat to the beginning of the second one, is called the cardiac cycle. In some animals like Hydra, we see a great ability of regeneration. A small fragment of the body can give rise to a whole new organism. If a tentacle is broken off from the body of a Hydra, detailed observation shows that, in this broken piece, Cells start to re-differentiate and form stem cells, which have the capacity to form any cell of the body. These stem cells start multiplying and form new cells. Which gradually form a body of a new hydra along with tentacles. In Hydra, another method of regeneration is seen. For example, if a sharp stone cuts the body of a Hydra into two parts, it has the capacity to reorganize and form a new Hydra from each of its parts.
In an earlier section, we studied about a motor. But how can we determine in which direction this motor will rotate if the direction of the magnetic field and current is given? We'll discuss one rule, Fleming's left-hand rule, whereby we can find the direction of force and the rotation direction of an armature coil for a given direction of magnetic field and current. According to this rule, if you arrange your left hand in such a way that your thumb, first finger, and second finger are all pointing at right angles to one another, and if your first finger is pointing in the direction of magnetic field, your second finger is pointing towards the direction of current, then the thumb would give the direction of the force. Let's check out the left-hand rule once more against the animation. The great scientist Bessemer Henry invented a converter. Steel is manufactured from pig iron in a Bessemer converter. A converter is turned into horizontal position. And molten pig iron is introduced in it. It is later brought almost into a vertical position and a blast of hot air is passed in it. All impurities present in the molten iron combined with oxygen present in air and form their respective oxides. Non-volatile oxides form slag over the molten metal. Volatile oxides escape as gases. Carbon monoxide burns at the mouth of the converter. Dying of the flame at the mouth shows that no impurity is present there. So the air supply is cut off and slag is separated from pure iron. A required amount of carbon is added in the form of Spiegel iron to this pure metal and steel is obtained. Molten steel is now poured into molds. 